Good New Year's Eve, everyone. I um, This is going to be the second time I did this video. But I basically am here today because I wanted to talk about my experience with live ops and bath and body work and give people a little bit more information about working as a remote customer service agent for live ops and some stuff that I've learned uh, my first time around and give information a little bit a little bit more clarity about it because I wish I had had this information when I started. So um, thanks for joining me and I hope this is helpful for everyone. So like I said, I have, um, this was my first time around doing customer service with live ops. I've never done a remote work before. Um, and it was only because I was able to get a faster internet connection that I was actually able to explore this as a secondary job opportunity. I do have a full-time job um, that I've done for 22, or excuse me, not 22 years, 20 years. I work with um, mental health clients and do medical records. So I do have a little bit of a customer service kind of experience under my belt. I have talked to customers. I've talked to uh, patients, as well as like attorneys and clinicians. So I do have some experience in being able to talk with people about their needs, et cetera. And that is really kind of a critically important piece if you are doing any kind of remote customer service job. Um, overall, I would say that my experience has been very informative. It's been very useful and has provided me a lot of growth. Uh, that being said, um, and I think that LiveOps is a good company in that they do provide a lot of, uh, they do have actually a lot of support. Uh, they do provide uh, some pretty good training, including Bath and Body Works does provide a lot of good training on how to be a good customer service rep. They, they teach a lot about how to do sales. They teach you a lot about how to be, um, to work with customers on the phone, have good customer uh, phone skills, that kind of stuff. That's really, really great. And um, so I think that uh, it's it's been a really big growth experience. I've learned a lot that has actually helped me in my other full-time job. Um, a couple of things though that I would say starting out, if you are considering this, if you're considering doing remote customer service work for the first time and you really don't have any idea you're going, kind of going in with uh, uh, kind of an wet behind the ears kind of experience I would say if to make sure that you have your computer skills up and running um, that you are very comfortable with computers that you have all the basics down um, and I would, I really would emphasize that if you are not comfortable with computers and you don't know a lot of the basics or you haven't reviewed things in a while, go back to school. I mean, it, go check out YouTube videos, go check out um, Windows uh, training videos, Google training videos, that kind of stuff. Highly, highly, highly recommend making sure that you feel very comfortable in doing as basic of things as um, being able to open windows, being able to uh, clip, uh, clip and paste things, okay? basic stuff, um, but just feel really, really comfortable. Understand how your computer works, okay, before you even do it, because it's going to save you a lot of headaches. If you are not that comfortable, uh, you might have some problems because it goes very fast and you're expected to really know that stuff, okay? Uh, also, make sure that you do have a really good internet connection. Now, that being said, um, the client that I worked with, I am, I was able to get away with using the T-Mobile Wi-Fi. Now, this is a confusing point. Uh, a lot of clients, a lot of remote customer service clients actually require you to have either a hard line, what they call a hard or hard, hard wired connection or a DSL line, like a high speed uh, fiber optics kind of line. The client that I worked for, they just specified hardwired. Now, I 
eventually figured out that I can work with that by basically having an ethernet cable going from my computer to my modem, which is my T-Mobile Wi-Fi. So while I am getting my internet from a Wi-Fi tower, I am hardwired with an ethernet cable to my T-Mobile CAN mo mobile modem, okay? Um, that may not work for every client. You're just gonna have to do your own research. It may not be a issue with you. I live in a country area um, remote, and so it's I'm out in the country. And I used to have a hard hard line, like actually came into the house with a wire, but I was only getting five megabyte download speeds. Uh, T-Mobile actually now I have 500 megabyte download speeds and like 22 up. You are going to have to have a decent, uh, reliable, stable internet connection. And I can't promise you that every client is going to have the same flexibility. Okay, again, like I said, I'm able to get away with doing the ethernet cable from my computer to my modem T-Mobile can, okay? That has worked. I haven't gotten into any trouble with that or anything like that. Some other clients, that, that may change. So you're just going to have to do your own research about whether or not that's going to be able to work for you. Um, so, yeah, those are two big caveats. Um, also, you know, if you haven't had any customer service experience before and you've not really talked with people, uh, they do train you on how to do this. I, I wouldn't say if you have never done it before, don't ever do it because it, it's a really great learning experience. You learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about how to be a better human being and, and have a little bit more empathy. It, it can be very challenging. Um, and so, but it, it really, it, I think the information they give to you uh, really kind of can help you be a better person help you uh, speak better in the world, et cetera. Um, but if you're not comfortable and you're not a people person, this might not be a good fit for you. <laughs> I've actually done waitressing uh, years ago. And that was a very, I did that for less than a year, but it was a very useful skill for me to do because I, I understood how to, how to interact with other, with customers and to be able to understand how to serve people and how to service people and how to work with people. And, 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 and so it's a very valuable experience. Okay. So that being said, let me get into a little bit more of details. Um, so other requirements that you may need to have is that there's some confusion also about the equipment requ uh, required. You will have to have some kind of headpiece. The client that you choose, now Bath and Body Works, I provided this for myself. But Bath and Body Works, um, or but other clients may have their own equipment that they will give to you. You have to bring usually your own computer to the, you know, you have to have your own computer. They recommend um, strongly or require that you have dual monitors. I do highly recommend you have dual monitors. Doesn't mean you have to have two separate monitors. Well, let me let me back it up. So there was some confusion about. Uh, your computer requirements. You can use a laptop, but make sure that it is an up-to-date laptop. It's not 10 years old. Make sure that you have enough room on it, that you have enough RAM on it, um, that you have enough uh, space and the speed, and that it's reliable and that you've kept it up to date. And like I said, you want to make sure that you're very comfortable with keeping your systems up to date, that you understand how they work, that kind of stuff. There is free training everywhere just go out and and get up to speed if you have not done that in a while um, understand how do your computers work you will be required to keep your computers maintained up to date have virus protection that kind of stuff so do that before you even start onboarding with a remote sort of because you're, you're just going to save yourself a lot of headaches as well as the people that are training you, okay? It's just, it, it goes very fast paced. So you really wanna make sure that you have those basics down before you ever like proceed forward. And I felt comfortable, but there was a lot of stuff that I learned that I had to review. And so it, it's just helpful, okay? 
So you can use a laptop, but just make sure that it's got enough space and speed, okay? Uh, you cannot use a Chromebook. You cannot usually use a MacBook. Uh, most remote customer service, especially with live ops, you have to have a PC. You can have a Chromebook. Um, and again, like I said, with a dual monitor. So I have a dual monitor stand that holds my laptop and that is one of my monitors. And then I have, I've had another additional monitor. You can set it up however you can afford it, uh, but it is really highly recommend that you do have a dual monitor because there's a lot of apps that you have to, um, that you have to work with. And so you need that space to be able to see everything that you're gonna be doing. And so the more visual space that you have, the easier and less headaches it's gonna be, okay? Just going forward on that. Whatever you can afford, like I only have an extra monitor and then I use my laptop monitor, okay? If you can afford something more extravagant, go for it. I do actually have a, a monitor stand that that I invested in as well that allows that. It does help to be very organized, um, to make sure that you do have a quiet space uh, that you can do it. I do this in my bedroom, okay? I don't have a dedicated home office or anything like that. Uh, I do this in my bedroom in a little corner of my bedroom. Um, but it does help to be very organized and that you are, have the ability to be in a quiet area. Uh, so if you have screaming children or pets or whatever, that's going to be a problem too. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it does help, again, like to be organized and to kind of know what you're doing because it will just lessen the um, uh, chaos of of getting onboarded and doing your work and stuff. Um, so what else? Uh, I think also when you're choosing, like I said, the training was good that being said and this may just be because of this year i don't know if other years are like that but it was a little bit chaotic okay i can't speak for other clients i just know my experience with bath and body works this year this season was incredibly chaotic while they do have support and they, they'll onboard you pretty quickly. Live Ops will onboard you really pretty quickly. So you've got to like keep up with those emails, check your email box, um, take care of that stuff because they send you stuff all the time, your logins, your passwords, that kind of stuff. Like you have to be, you know, kind of up to speed and make sure that you're getting all the stuff. And sometimes people might miss an email. So make sure that you you organize your email um, and that you're collecting all your emails and putting them in a, in a centralized location where you know where they are because you're going to have to like pay attention to those. If you miss an email, you might miss your login and you're going to be set back. It's going to cause you headaches. Um, so be very organized with your email. Um, keep track of your passwords. Keep track of, of all the stuff. You have to be able to do that in order to be really successful. Um, and like I said, they, they onboard you pretty quickly. The trainings usually are anywhere from two to four weeks. That includes nesting where you're actually working with, you know, uh, customers, et cetera. But my experience, it was very intensive and, and it depends on the client. They have trainings in the morning, they have trainings in the evening. So you're gonna have to like, look how that fits in your schedule. If you already have a full-time job, that's going to be a really tight thing. I will just put that out there. Uh, <laughs> they, you know, they they want to say, oh, well, you get paid twenty dollars an hour. That's an average. Um, they're going to be doing a lot of unpaid training, a lot of it, a lot of unpaid preparation, a lot of unpaid, and so you may only be working one, like a one hour, what they call a commit. Okay, and in that one hour that you have this thing on and you are live uh you may only be talking to a customer for 20 minutes and you're only going to get paid for that 20 minutes and so they base it per minute like you can be paid 30 28 cents a minute 30 cents a minute whatever and they may have bonuses they may have uh extra times or whatever but that's on average so you're only getting paid by the minute when you are actually speaking to a customer okay 
So, but there's a lot of prep time that you have to do. Uh, you usually have to be online at least one, like a half hour, just kind of setting up your systems, doing all this other kind of stuff. You're expected to do a lot of, um, a lot of homework, a lot of studying, watching videos, keeping up to date on up to date information, training, information, that kind of stuff. So, and all that's unpaid. So just flat out. You know, and and so that that twenty dollars an, an an hour is on average. And while that may be dissuading for many, um, keep in mind if you're working from home, you don't have gas. You can really have flexibility in creating your own schedule. Um, and that's one thing too is that you are required to work a certain number of hours per month, uh, give or take. When they're in hot seasons, like what we just had, the holiday season, you are required uh, to commit to a certain amount of hours. And if you don't, like, so if you schedule 10 hours a week and you are actually on the schedule for those, like you said, you would work from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then you just decide, I don't want to work. Uh, that will be a negative mark against you. So keep that in mind. It's not that flexible. You have you are responsible for making sure that someone else picks up that job if you have a doctor's appointment that you missed. Okay, um, so keep that in mind that when you say you're going to work, you're going to work. Okay. Um, what else? So yeah, and the other timing that I would say uh, with the the training and everything is that some clients like Bath and Body Works are very seasonal and they obviously we just got through the holiday season so Black Friday man it goes hot and I was I started with my training on October 31st and I was in that crew <clears throat> and it was very intensive training very fast and you, you're working out kinks, technical issues, that kind of stuff, trying to get in all this training, like you have to do their trainings, or you can be dumped from the process. And they know, like, you have to take little quizzes and stuff like that. And um, what I would say is that if you are looking into this, look for a client. Oh, this is the other thing, too. So if you're choosing sorry, <laughs> trying to, if you're choosing your client, um, like I started and everybody was raving about them, Bath, Bath and Body Works. And by the time I was starting to look and live ops will really kind of push you, like choose a client, choose a client, choose a client, which is like Bath and Body Works, um, Nike, that kind of stuff. Uh, keep in mind that the, they onboard people in their training cyclically. So it, one week, you might not see any clients and then the next week they'll be back. Okay. So if you don't see the client that you really want at that time, they may be back in a week or two. Okay. Because they are onboarding groups of agents at a time. So there's many groups that get onboarded and they'll, they'll go, okay, we've got this window, we're going to take in these many agents, we're going to train them, and then and then they'll do another group, okay? So bearing that in mind, I would say that if you are doing a cyclical, seasonal, you want to work for someone like Bath and Body Works, it's best to really actually choose them around August and and do that onboarding and that training as early as August. And the reason why is because you'll have more one-on-one -on -one training. Um, they may not be training. I don't know if they would be onboarding that soon, but the su start looking for them to be onboarding people around August, September, because they need those agents. And the sooner you get in on that, uh, the sooner you, you will have, uh, more time to be able to really get up to speed, okay? I wish I had had the opportunity to be a few, like in the classes a few weeks before because I, the minute I really kind of went live was during Black Friday and I was like in the thick of it and it was very chaotic. There wasn't a whole lot of support once they start going live and things just were like bam, 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 bam. Um, and so it is, and then in like January, it just dies. Okay. So just keep that in mind 
and and they may not start onboarding again until like probably August September again to get trained to get uh, seasonal workers up and running. So just bear that in mind and try and get on those seasonal jobs uh, sooner than later because it's going to be a lot of work. Like I'm considering doing another client and their hot season is going to be coming up here in the next few months. So it's, but it, it's going to require a lot of training on your part. So I just don't want people to feel discouraged because they may not be getting the, you know, support that they require and we all want to do our best. And I feel like this, my experience was a little bit more chaotic and I feel like a lot of other customer, um, a lot of the other agents were stating that as well, that this season especially seemed a little bit more chaotic um, and you're trying to figure out stuff and you're trying to learn stuff and uh, that support really isn't as there as you would like. And I don't want people to go away really taking that as a kind of as a personal thing necessarily if you've done all your homework and you're like hey wow I'm doing this and I'm not getting the support or information that I need um, it can it, it can be frustrating so just go into that with that in mind um, I'm trying to think of some other things that I was thinking about uh but, you know, it's, I'm like, I'm trying, like, what did I talk about in my other video? Um, I, yeah, I, I, I may come back on because there may be some stuff that I forgot about. But I just, th those were some of the really important things that I would recommend uh, if you're starting out doing remote customer service or thinking about working for live ops. Um, and I hope that what I've stated has helped people. And I will certainly, if you've got a question, I will try and follow back up around. Uh, I just want to give information in my experience because if, overall, I think my experience was useful. I learned a lot of stuff about myself. I learned a lot about customer service and I learned um, some more skills that I can apply for my other job and other jobs. Okay. That's valuable. Right. And I think one of the biggest things is that, you know, we all are customers, right? We're not just customer service agents like we're not you know that we have been customers as well so I think overall doing something like this can help us be better human beings frankly um, I think that we can kind of have allow ourselves to have the insight to how to be kinder to each other how to talk to other people more easily how to be able to problem solve how to be able to help people and and work and yes you may be selling just kind of a, a product and it may not seem like it's a really important product um, at the time, but I think overall it, the experience can really teach us to be better people. And if we look at that and we have kind of a realistic expectation about it, I think that it can help um, society in general. And so that's just something to think about that, uh, you know, you may only be doing this because you need that, that money. And I think we all, need a little extra money in our pocket. Um, but if we're only doing it for that and we don't take away anything more from it, um, you know, I think we're missing out. I mean, I'm not trying to be totally idealistic about it, but it, I, I did I'll have to say that I learned a lot. I learned about some, some stuff about myself and about how to be a better person. So, um, and, and to kind of have, you know, those, that, interaction learning about interaction with other human beings so if you like that great wonderful um if you don't like people you might not want to do this so that being said i will end and i will uh possibly do another video just because i'm sure i forgot stuff that i talked about in the other video which i'm like why did i forget so remember to uh, do your your homework on your computer so anyway i hope everyone has a nice wonderful 2023. Thank you very much and a happy new year. Thanks.